This lesson is on functions. Let's get started. All right, so here is our wordy explanation. You can go ahead and write that down. We'll get to some of the um, terms here, domain. Whoops. We'll get to uh, domain and range in just a bit. Although the definition here is rather wordy, it basically goes back to the function machine that you may have seen in math at some point. Let's say you had number three, you put it into a machine, whatever picture they used, and then the output, let's say, is one. So what did you have to do to three to get to one? Well, subtract two. So that, that was a function machine. That's basically a function. So for here, this is our input also known as domain, and this is our output, also known as range. So domain is just the set of input values in a function. The range is just the set of output values in a function. So the input would be the domain and the output would be the range. A way we can organize this information is using a function table. Um, that's nothing more than taking your domain and your range and putting it in a table. So let's take a look at that. Here's an example of a function table. We have our input and our output and our rule in the middle. Again, this is just a way of organizing the material. After we have filled in the information, we've taken a negative one here and put it over here for our rule zero zero there, one, one there, and so on. Now we just go ahead and solve for each of those expressions. And here is our completed um, function table. Again, the input is nothing more than the domain. And really at this point, domain and range are going to be the terms they're going to use for input and output uh, pretty much from here on out throughout the rest of your career in math. So anytime they refer to, the, even in um, high school, college math, they're going to refer to the domain and the range, and they're not going to refer to as the input or the output. One uh, aspect of this that is very important to know about is this portion right here. This is the function of n, or it's read as the f of n. F of n. We just write it this way though. So the function of n, when n is a certain value, we're, we, re, we replace that value, that input, and we rewrite the equation this way. So this is just kind of putting it all together. So this negative one here is the negative one here. So here's an example of a problem that you'll see in your math book. The way you read this is f of negative 2 if f of n equals 4n plus 1. What you're going to do is replace n with negative 2. So here we have went ahead and replaced negative 2 with n, and now we have a new equation. f of negative 2 equals 4 times negative 2 plus 1. Then in the next step, f of negative 2 equals negative 8 plus 1. And the final step, f of negative 2 equals negative 7. So it looks rather complicated, but really you're just replacing this n value with this negative 2 value. Thinking back to our spreadsheets, the application for this uh, is right in the spreadsheet. If you look at the formula bar, it's going to have f of x or f of n, and then you put in your equation. So this would be the equation we would put in, f of n plus 1, um, n being some cell that we designate. Maybe it's a1, b1, whatnot. So this really has an application to any type of Excel spreadsheet, um, Google spreadsheet, any kind of spreadsheet you would work on. 
So here's another kind of example you may see. Make a function table to find the range of f of n equals negative 2x minus 4 if the domain is negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. So in order to solve this, the first thing we're going to do is create a function table. This will be our input, our domain. This will be our rule, our center area. And we're looking for the output, the f of n. So here's another kind of example you may see in the book. Make a function table to find the range of f of n equals negative 2n minus 4 if the domain is negative 2, 0, 2, 4. So this will be our data or our input for the first column. Second column will be our rule, negative 2n minus 4. And then the third column will be f of n. Here's our function table. I went ahead and filled in our domain information in the first column. For the second column, I replaced the variable with the values in the domain. So negative 2, negative 2, 0, 0, and so on. The range for each of those, uh, when the domain is negative 2, the range will be 0. When it is 0, it will be negative 4, and so on. And the final step you may want to include. Um, here we have the domains as negative 2, 0, 2, 4. You'll want to write the range in the same um, format uh, using the brackets. Uh, so here's our range in numerical order. Uh, it's important that it's in numerical order the way it it, that way it corresponds with our domain, so neg when the domain is negative 2, range will be 0. When the domain is 0, range is negative 4, and so on. So most importantly to remember from this lesson is domain refers to input, range refers to output, and this is read as f of n.